With that, uh, I would like to call the uh, CMAC Project Selection Committee to order. Um, to start off with, uh, we'll uh, do um, attendance. Uh, Elliot, if you could uh, read off the members' names to see uh, who's present. Okay, um, Don Here. Dan Ferguson. Here. Mark Pistol. Here. Matt Shelton. Chris Smith. Uh, here. Chris Snyder. Present. And Jeff Snyder. All right. Um, was there anybody missed uh, in the roll call of the committee members? All right. Hearing none, uh, let's move on to agenda changes and announcements. Um, to start off with, um, as permitted by the uh, governor's disaster declaration of August 21st, 2020, the determination has been made that an in-person meeting is not practical or prudent for this committee to meet in person. To ensure a transparent and open meeting, to ensure a transparent and open meeting as possible, we posted the meeting materials approximately one week in advance. We will provide a recording of the meeting uh, linked on our website and we'll take all votes uh, by roll call. Uh, with that, um, there are no additional agenda changes. Um, are there any announcements from the committee members? Uh, staff does not have any. All right, uh, hearing none, we'll move on to uh, item, uh, item three, uh, approval of the minutes from July 16th, 2020. Um, there was, uh, there will be one additional change to that. Um, Dave Tomzik from PACE will be added to the participants list. Um, he was uh, inadvertently left off. Um, with that, uh, do I have a motion to approve the minutes of July 16, 2020? Yeah, this so is moved. Mark. Second. Mark I'm sorry, who had the second on that? That was Mark Fitzdick. Okay, uh, who who is the first uh, the motion? Chris, uh, Chris Snyder. Thank you, Chris. Sorry, it, there was a little bit of over talk, and I just couldn't tell who was first and who was second. Um, with that, are there any uh, changes or questions on the minutes? All right, uh, hearing none. Um, Elliot, will you do a roll call vote of the of the members? Darren Rippert? Aye. Ben Ferguson? Aye. Ben Pitson? Aye. Ben Shelton? Chris Smith? Aye. Chris Snyder? Aye. And Jeff Snyder? Aye. All right. Uh, minutes have been approved. Uh, moving on to uh, 4.0 program monitoring. Um, the uh, programming status sheets um, were actually not updated in time for the meeting. Um, we're working on making some adjustments to them. Uh, we will get those updated here in the next week or so, um, and we'll post those on the website uh, for the, both the committee and members of the public to see. Uh, 4.2, the programming summary and obligation goal. Uh, the status report was presented to the committee. Um, currently, we're sitting at 58 million in obligations for federal fiscal year 20. Um, that's short of the uh, the stated obligation goal for the year of 115 million, um, but we still have time. Uh, there's 75, uh, 79, excuse me, million um, in advanced construction projects um, that could be converted. Um, between now and the end of the uh, federal fiscal year um, uh, at the end of this month. Uh, so are there any questions on the obligation uh, goal report? All right, uh, moving on to 5.0, uh, the CMAC midpoint performance plan. 
So um, the CMAC performance plan, um, the, the purpose of this document um, is to demonstrate uh, the progress that's been achieved over the past uh, two years um, towards our two-year and ultimately four-year target um, and make any adjustments that we may see fit uh, for the four-year um, uh, target. Uh, with that, um, it's still in a draft uh, format. Um, it's being presented today uh, for discussion purposes, if, if committee members have any questions on that, um, but also to show you where we're at with that. Uh, Elliot, could I get the next slide? Um, so there, just a refresher, there's, there's three different CMAC performance targets uh, uh, that are required. Um, the uh, the uh, non-SOV targets, and I'm forgetting the acronym right now off the top of my head, I should have written it down, uh, but uh, it's the uh, um, hours of excessive delay uh, target. Yeah. Um, and just as a reminder to the members, this is not just for uh, the CMAP region, uh, because of our uh, non-attainment area it goes into uh, Northwest Indiana, it also includes them as well. And then the final target are the uh, total uh, total emission reductions. Uh, so you can see uh, for the, uh, the hours of excessive delay, um, there was no two-year target um, but we uh, required, but there was a four-year target set. Um, for 2019, uh, uh, they we're showing um, the hours as 14.5, which for this case, um, a down um, is a uh, a good thing. Um, so whether we hold up for the next two years for this target, um, it's yet to be seen, um, but 14.5 is well below the 15.4 the uh, year target. With non-SOV, um, we're showing um, a two-year progress assessment of 31.2% of trips being taken, uh, work trips being taken uh, by non-SOV uh, means. Um, this is short of the two-year target. Um, however, the because of the delay in um, Census Bureau data um, for the ACS, um, we're currently showing the two-year assessment with 2018 numbers. Um, so it is still potentially possible to meet the 31.4. Um, but we're also curious of how the current pandemic is going to affect these numbers. Um, we know work from home is up. Um, but we also know transit is down. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how the um, 2020 numbers shake out um, for that. Uh, and it, your guess is as good as mine if we're going to meet that. Um, I think it's outside of the control of this program to um, affect that um, from the, the pandemic standpoint. Um, next slide. The total emissions reduction targets, um, uh, there's, it's, it's providing some interesting um, uh, data. The two-year assessment uh, for both nitric oxides and particulate matter 2.5, uh, 2 um, we're, we've already exceeded the four-year target for both of those um, uh, pollutants and, and precursors. Um, for VOCs, we're, we're a little bit behind on the two-year target. Um, this just has, happens to do with how projects have moved forward and other projects have been delayed. Um, looking at what we currently have programmed, we still have the potential to meet the four-year target. Um, so for VOC, at least we're not recommending um, uh, changing the four-year target, um, but keeping it the same, uh, we still think we can meet it. Um, with the, the it, it's been asked by uh, several other staff members, well, how can we've already exceeded the four-year target um, uh, with our two-year assessment? Um, and it comes down to really one project um, for nitric oxides. It's um, when the um, Metra uh, uh, locomotive um, repower and, repl and replacement uh, project uh, move forward uh, to transferring funds from FHW to FTA, we had to report on those emissions. And so the majority of that 7,000 is from that one project. Um, and similarly, the same with the particulate matter. 
Um, with the particulate matter 10.0, um, I just want to make a special note of that. Um, we did not set targets for PM10. Um, there are a couple different areas that are in our region that are in maintenance for PM10. All of them are related to mining activities and our point source and not mobile source. Uh, we've never evaluated particulate matter as part of our um, uh, evaluation of projects. Um, so we have not made any attempt to go back and reevaluate projects for PM10. Uh, with that, um, I'd like to open up the floor to any questions or discussion on this. Yeah, yeah, Doug, this is Mark Pitstick. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah, good. Uh, I have a one comment or recommendation and then a question. Uh, first is the, the comment is really sort of a layout comment or an organization for this draft report. Uh, the first couple pages lays out the baseline and then it has those some little graphics in there. And then after that, to talk about the targets and the assessments, it would be nice to have all those numbers together in one table for each for each of these areas, you know, so that you could see the baseline and the target and sort of see how the progression is. Okay. If that's possible to add a column into the, the later tables to do that. You can see yeah. on your the slides you have today don't say the baseline on there because it's not in the same table. Right. Um and related to that is my my question and it's about uh the baseline for the performance uh the peak peak hours of excessive delay. I mean, it looks like the baseline was 14.8, and then, you know, the goal, the target, initial target was, uh, I don't know, 14.5, a decrease, but then the four-year target is 15.5, so that's higher than the baseline. I just, I, I just making sure that that's, that was intentional. Is that, what's the story? Yeah, so uh, we're using FHWA's RITUS tool uh, to do this. Mm -hmm. To, um, to run the numbers. Um, and that's actually what it produced and showed based upon um, uh, other factors that we, we would see an increase. Um, it's not that we're shooting to have uh, increased congestion. Um, it's just okay. showing that like we do feel that um, even with the current state, like, I mean, CMAC projects probably have very little effect over the national highway system, which is what we ha were required to use. Uh, you know, a lot of our projects are on um, locally controlled and county routes that don't actually aren't actually on the national highway system. Um, so it's kind of a difficult target to to um, to affect with directly with CMAC. Um, but yes, this is what British based upon. Uh, uh, what we're forecasting as far as population growth and changes in travel is, is going to happen over the next, uh, well, when we set the target two years ago, that's where, where it was at. Um, okay, so even setting aside the COVID impacts, there was an, an expectation of an initial dip and then a, an increase after that, after the first two years. Well, we didn't have to set a two-year target, so that's... No, uh, but, okay, but, all right. I would add that um, at least the 2018 uh, uh, numbers actually showed 17, uh, which was okay. higher than I mean yeah. the, the target. Right. Um, it's it's going to vary year by year based upon construction activities, um, uh, potential increase in travel. I'm sure the COVID numbers are actually um, initially for uh, this year. They were probably down for for at least a few months, um, but probably a, the the peak hour excessive delay is probably going to increase. Okay, that's all for me. Thanks, Doug. No problem. Anybody else have any comments or questions? Hey, Doug, Chris Snyder. Um, yeah. In the handout, table seven, which. If you don't have the handout at your at, at where you're at um, for the viewers, they may not may not see this, but we have all the various CMAC project categories: access to transit, bottleneck, etc. And we have two items under the two progress or two years. We have 2018 and 2019. Um, and in some cases, 2019 is more. In some cases, it's less. In some cases, it's noticeably more or less. And I didn't know whether we're to infer anything with those trends 
Um, no, it, it was based purely upon the projects and when they were programmed when we were setting the targets. Um, so we do feel that the, the projects will probably shift around a little bit. Um, and uh, it, it's, it, it, it's kind of, it's hard to always gauge like what projects might be delayed. Um, there's, there, it's not a trend. Um, it's just purely based upon what's programmed in those different categories at the time. Okay. Does that does that make sense? So it's it's just saying for a group of projects in a particular programmed year, the projected or calculated or modeled impact of that suite of projects for that particular year will have the following impact on the various measures, VOC or NOx. Correct. And then you'll notice the the numbers that we put in the progress numbers are based upon what was actually what actually moved forward um, to either construction or implementation um, in those two individual years, and and, and the numbers are different, um, and we expected them to be. Um, uh, programming is a dynamic process. Um, projects get delayed for reasons outside of their control, and and some projects move forward uh, faster than maybe initially anticipated. Okay, I just didn't know if in, in, in some measures in 2018, a VOC of 4.8, and then in 2019, a VOC of 0.5, um, whether that was a bad trend. Um, but it's but what you're telling me is it's, you're not looking at a trend, you're looking at a programming cycle or a fiscal year um, based on what's programmed, what the, it's still showing a reduction. Right. So um, that's but the but it's guess. it's purely based upon the projects that are are expected to go in that year. Okay. So I should add that it's not a cumulative number. It's based purely on what is programmed in that year and what will count for that year. Okay. All right. Um, I would add if if anybody has any additional comments, um, they feel free to reach out to me. Um, uh, we we do intend to bring this uh, the plan to uh, transportation committee for their review, um, and then uh, approval by the MPO policy committee um, in October. Um, with that said, um, the deadline for turning this into IDOT is actually October first. Um, we will turn in a provisional report pending um, the approval by the MPO policy committee, um, but I don't foresee there being any problems since we're not adjusting the four-year targets. Um, we're just asking them to uh, approve the report itself um, as, as meeting the requirement of FHWA. With that, um, any other comments or questions? All right, uh, moving on to uh, project changes. So there were uh, five project changes uh, submit, uh, submitted for your consideration. Um, I'm just going to go through all of the changes and what they're requesting um, and what the staff recommendation is, is concerned. Um, and then uh, we'll uh, vote on them all as a whole uh, with individual questions being able to handle on each individual. Uh, project as need be. Um, the first one was the Skokie Church Street uh, project. They're requesting uh, a transfer of $101,700 in CMAC um, from their phase two engineering um, to, or from construction to phase two engineering. Um, when they got into doing the phase two engineering, um, they're being asked to do additional work that wasn't anticipated. Uh, with improvements to intersections um, and uh, potential road diet. Um, the staff recommendation is to approve the transfer. Uh, the second project is the Aurora Montgomery Road project. Um, the sponsor is requesting a schedule change to move up phase two uh, engineering from 2021 to 2020 uh, per IDOT's request. Um, the amount of funds that are being moved up are $371,196 in CMAC. Uh, staff recommendation is for approval. Uh, the Schomburg uh, Higgins Road bike path, uh, the sponsor is requesting a cost increase of 20,000 in TAPL funds uh, for construction 
Uh, bids came in higher, um, so that's filling that gap. Um, the staff recommendation is for approval. Um, and then the Will County Forest Preserve District, uh, Black Road, um, uh, DuPage River Trail, uh, or Black Road Trail um, over I-55. Um, the sponsor is requesting uh, additional funds in the amount of 154700 in TAP uh, for construction and construction engineering. Um, this is to uh, build out the, um, the shoulder of I-55 to enable uh, the, a crane to be brought in to set the bridge in place. Um, staff is uh, recommending approval of that change. And the last one is the Elgin uh, Bikeways Plan Route 4 Southwest Quadrant. Um, the sponsor, the, currently the project is in deferral status. Um, they have since completed, uh, design, or they've received design approval for, from Phase 1 Engineering and they're requesting the reinstatement of funds for Phase 2 um, in the amount of 110000 uh, in CMAC. And the staff recommendation is to reinstate uh, those funds for that project. Uh, so those are all five uh, projects. Um, uh, do I have a motion? This is Chris Schmidt from IDAP, so moved. Thank you. Second? Mark Chris Pitt Snyder. Okay. I beat you, Mark, again. All right. All right. <laughs> hey, Chris. Thank you. Um, any questions or discussion on the changes of requested? Yeah, Doug, Darwin Burkhardt, the Illinois EPA. Um, yeah. Just want to point out, I think there may be a typo on the summary table for Skokie on page 204. It it, it says 100, 101,070, and I think that number should be 101,700. Thank you. We'll, we'll make that change and, and repost that so that it's clear. Any other questions? All right, um, well, hearing none, um, with the motion on the table, um, Elliot, would you do a roll call vote? Aye. 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 Hi, Chris Petter says yes. I'm sorry, what was that? Did you say Chris Schmidt or Chris Snyder? I said Chris Schmidt. That's Chris Schneider. Chris Snyder. Chris Snyder is an eye vote. Okay. Is yes, Elliot sir. on the moon? Just out of curiosity. He's having a little bit yeah. of speaker uh, feedback. That's I don't know, Jeff, are you on mute or did you have to step away? Let's oh, I'll see him. I see him on the, the list of people. He's on mute. Right. Hey, Jeff, uh, uh, Shriver, how do you uh, vote on the uh, project change requests? All right, uh, we'll put him as an abstention. <laughs> All right, um, moving on to item seven, uh, the uh, program development for uh, the federal fiscal years 2022 to 2026. Um, at our last meeting, um, we presented some changes um, and had some discussion on that. Um, the, since that meeting, uh, no additional comments um, have, were, were presented to staff. Um, so today, uh, we would like to ask for your approval um, of those changes to both the, the scoring criteria um, and also the development process. Um, I'll read through the, the different changes. Um, uh, that were presented, um, and then we can open it up for discussion. Uh, the first was removing the overall regional priority scoring category, um, but with that, uh, creating a standalone inclusive growth uh, uh, category. 
uh, worth 10 points. Uh, moving the transit support of land use that was a regional uh, scoring priority to the uh, transit uh, transportation impact criteria. Um, and then adjusting the transit uh, transportation impact criteria points to uh, 10 for each of the criteria in that category. Uh, replacing the uh, pedestrian environment factor scoring for bike connectivity uh, with level of traffic stress and removing the annual health benefit uh, from the direct emissions reduction uh, transportation impact criteria uh, and increasing the benefits uh, to sensitive population scoring uh, from 20 to 25 points. Um, the final one, uh, which isn't a criteria, uh, but in the development, uh, is the uh, using uh, transportation development credits for highways uh, for high need communities, local match, uh, similar to the process that's used for the STP uh, shared fund. Um, so with that, those are the uh, six changes that we're proposing today. Um, are there any discussion on this or questions of staff? Uh, right. This is Mark, Mark Pitstick. I motion to approve the changes as laid out by staff. Thank you, Mark. Um, do I have a second? Second, Chris Second. Med IDOT. Thank you. Second, Chris Snyder, DuPage County. <laughs> All right. So um, to help Elliot out here, um, I'll do the roll call. Um, uh, I'm not sure if his uh, his mic is just not functioning well. Um, I switched to his mic. I not Doug, Doug, it's Terry. I can yeah. do it for you. All right. Thanks, Terry. All right, um, Darwin. Aye. Doug. Aye. Mark. Aye. Miss Bilkey's not here. Chris Snyder. Aye. Chris Schmidt. Aye. Jeff Schreiber. Aye. All right, with that, uh, the uh, changes, the motion approved. Um, moving on, uh, we have the public comment. Uh, staff did not receive any additional public comments in advance of the meeting. Um, uh, is there anybody in the audience that wishes to address the committee? Sorry here, I'm trying to move over to the chat to see if there's anything. I'm not seeing anybody wishing to address the committee. Is that correct? That's, there's nothing in the chat. That's correct. Okay. All right. Uh, well, with that, uh, the we'll move on. To the next meeting is uh, scheduled for Thursday, October 29th um, at 11 p.m. Uh, barring any changes, we anticipate that it will also be uh, another remote meeting, uh, most likely through GoToMeeting as well. Um, moving on to other business, um, does anybody else on the committee have any other business? All right, well, hearing none, um, I um, will adjourn the meeting of the Metro Selection Committee. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.